and welcome on in everybody to the Photoshop uh, Creative Challenge. I'm your host Sam Peterson and today we're going to be working on a surreal landscape image where we're creating a tear in the sky. Uh, good to see everyone. Welcome on in. We're going to be having two weeks of challenges here. Um, so definitely make sure to join us. Check out the challenge page in the discord to join us off stream. But let me jump into Photoshop right away and show you what we're working with. So this is the base image I have. You can download the starter file from the description below. And today we're going to be creating an image that looks a little something like this. So kind of the surreal uh, composite where we're showing off different composite techniques that will hopefully give you some good tools to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off uh, by, let's see here, <clears throat> we're going to take our assets. And if you go into the asset folder, this is in the starter file. Uh, we have some tear images. So I'm going to do control or command J to duplicate this. And I'm just going to drag it out of the asset folder for us to work with. So that is our tear image. Uh, I can make this a smart object by right clicking it and doing convert to smart object. And then I'm just going to scale this down. So from here, what I want to do is I want to lower the opacity a little bit just so I can see it, kind of see how we're positioning this on our sky. And I'm going to tilt it a little bit. I want to kind of give it a diagonal dynamic look. I actually want to stretch this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on shift and drag it up just to stretch it. Now this isn't a super recognizable image. Like if you're distorting a person or something like that, you'll notice. But since this is a tear, we can get away with it. Stretch it a little bit more. That looks pretty good. Something like that. So I'm going to press enter to confirm that. I'm going to take this opacity back up. And actually what I'm going to do is press L for my lasso tool. And I'm just going to select the big area around it. Um, I'm going to press control or command C to copy. Control or command D to deselect. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete that layer. Now I'm going to do control or, or command shift V to paste that in place. And this is where we can go from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this little mask button at the bottom of the layers panel here. That'll create us a mask. I'm going to make sure that mask is selected. And I'm going to select a brush um, that kind of has a hard edge. I'm using this sampled brush 1.3. And actually, if you go into the Discord and you search um, in the search bar Sam's brushes, I think you'll find my brush pack. And it should have the sampled brush 1.3, just in case you want to use this one specifically. So I'm going to kind of mask around the edges here just to give it a little bit of a border where it looks like the paper is torn off. And what I can do for this little rolled up piece of paper is I can press W, bring me to the quick selection tool over here on the left, and I can select around uh, this little rolled up piece of paper. You can hold on shift to add to your selection or alt or option to subtract, but I'm just going to add to this selection here. I think that kind of gives me what I want. So I'll go back to my brush tool with B as the hotkey. And I'll mask out around the edges of that. And that's pretty much what I want there. There's a little halo around the edge. I'll mask that out. And then I'll just kind of go around the border. I'm not going to make this too perfect, but just kind of give it like a hard, jagged edge. You can actually do a little bit. If you have a tablet, um, this works. You can get a little bit of softness on the edges with the pen pressure. Or if you're using a mouse, you can actually lower the flow here at the top. So it's not completely hard, but sometimes having a little bit of like texture or softness on those edges, just subtly. You want it hard for the most part. Kind of makes it look like it's been torn slightly. So I think that looks pretty good. We'll keep it there. And then we will um, select the middle so we can get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is there's a lot of ways to select white or a solid color like this. One I want to show you, we'll, we'll use another one next. Uh, but one that I want to show you is the color range. So I'm going to go to um, select color range here. And basically you'll see these little tools on the right, these uh, eyedroppers. I can select my main one here. Just select whichever color you think, you know, is grabbing most of it. And then you can actually add or subtract from those. So I'm going to add. I'm just going to click again where it's a little bit gray or fuzzy. I can click a few times if I need to. Now the fuzziness is going to determine this a lot. Um, if you have the fuzziness around like 10, 
you might get a little bit of a halo around the edges. As you push it further, it gets rid of that more and more. Um, so somewhere for this image, I think 50, 60 is working pretty good. And I'm going to click OK. Now what I did there was I actually had my mask selected. So I want to Control Z that and make sure my, um, my layer is selected. We'll do color range. I think we pretty much have the same selection there. Click OK. And now we have our selection. So if I go back to the mask, make sure to click the mask now. Otherwise, you'll just paint black. But if you do black with the fill bucket, which is hotkey G over here, um, black conceals, white reveals. So we're, we're masking that out with black. I can press Control D to deselect. And then I can paint with black anywhere that I missed, which is really just the text here. Um, if there's any bits left over in the center, you can just paint over those. But to get around the edges, we get a nice clean selection there. So from here, uh, let's see, we want to add in a background image. So I'm going to go back into my assets. I'm going to grab this sunset image, controller command J to duplicate and just pull it out of that folder. Hide these folders, the asset folder. Now we got this. I'm going to put this on the very bottom. And then I'm just going to grab underneath the border of this tear with the lasso tool. Hotkey L for that. It doesn't need to be clean. It just needs to be hiding behind this edge. So I'll grab that really quick. I'll do controller command shift I and then mask that out of the grassy landscape image, not the sunset one, but we'll click this little mask button. We inverted our selection and this way we can kind of move this around rather than masking out a specific section of the sunset. If we mask it out of the uh, grassy landscape, we can kind of play with the sky and get what we want. So that looks pretty good. Um, one thing I don't like is the tear. The tear is too orange. It's kind of seems out of place in this grassy landscape image. It's competing with the sunset. So I'm going to modify that slightly with an adjustment layer. Layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll do hue and saturation. So what I want to show you here is if you ever need to tweak things slightly, hue and saturation, or sorry, adjustment layers in general are a great, great way to just tweak things slightly because that's a big part of compositing. Like this is a little too dark, a little too light, a little too saturated, a little too blue. Um, so adjustment layers, if you haven't used them, are just a great way to tweak things like just slightly so they look right. So I'm going to right click this, do create clipping mask. You can also hold on alter option and click between the layers. You'll see this little arrow pop up. That's another quick way to do uh, clipping masks. But I'm just going to crank down the saturation, not all the way, but maybe like maybe there. And then what I can do from here is I can actually mask back in some of that warm light if I want to. So this mask here on hue and saturation, I'll select that and I'll select a soft round brush. And if I paint with black to hide that saturation effect, we can actually paint in more warmth that was originally there. So it's kind of like the sunset is casting some light. And again, if you want to get a soft uh, transition with this brush, use a soft round brush, but you can also take down that flow at the top that we talked about so you can just click gradually and build it up and not have it be too aggressive a little warm light coming through that's good um so i might also want to do another adjustment layer just to kind of show anything you need to tweak you can do it with adjustment layers so i'm going to do exposure do you see the left part of this curled up paper it looks a little too dark um there's a pretty heavy shadow on it but it's in this really bright environment of the grassy sunny day. Uh, so I don't like that too much. So I'm going to clip this exposure layer as well. And I'm going to crank up the exposure quite a bit. So that left side of the shadow gets brighter. Now what I can do is I can grab the fill bucket tool again with black, make sure the mask is selected, fill it in to hide everything, select white. And now I can paint in to reveal white reveals black conceals, and just paint in a little bit of light on that left side. So it looks a little bit more like it fits this particular environment. So I think that's pretty good. Um, let's see. From here, what I want to do is I want to take in another one of our assets, and I'm going to create another tear image. So this tear right here, let's duplicate that control or command J bring it out of my assets folder, hide my assets folder. And this is the image we have. So I'm going to make another layer punch. 
and it's going to be the same thing. So I'll show you kind of quickly what we can do with this, but it's going to be the same methods we just used, just repeated. Now you don't have to do this. You can do like one tear in the sky. You can, uh, we, we're going to put like this alien crawling out of it. Like he punched through layers of reality to get into this realm. Uh, but you can do like spaceships. You can do, I don't know, literally anything you can think of. So definitely feel free to get creative with it. Um, let's see here. So I'm getting a little bit of red. I hope this isn't too choppy. I hope my frames aren't going down. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to maybe have to check my internet after this and see why it's doing that. But anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm using the quick selection tool and I'm selecting the center of this. Now you can hold on shift to add to the selection, hold on alt to subtract from the selection. Um, but from here, I think that looks pretty good. I'll do control or command shift I to invert that selection. And then we can mask it out of the center. Now from here, it's the same thing. You can use the quick selection tool to select around some of these, um, these shapes. And you can mask it out with black. Pretty much the same thing we did before. Get rid of all that. And then you can kind of go around the edges and just kind of clean it up create that tear effect like you want. Now for the interest of time, since we have many more steps, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. <clears throat> um, and pop out a little like Martha Stewart version I got where I've already cut this out just to save some time. But it's the same techniques we did before. So hopefully that gives you some ideas to work with. All right, let's hide this asset folder again. So this is the tear, what it looks like cut out same masking techniques. I'll bring this in here. We're going to have this being punched out of the sunset sky. So I'm going to bring this tear down um, below the first tear. Now we're getting a lot of layers here. And this is where it's a good idea to start naming your layers, especially in compositing images where you have many layers, many adjustment layers, it gets way too chaotic to keep track of otherwise. So I'm going to name tear the first tear that we did the big one tear one. Uh, this one's going to be named Tear 2. We got Grassy Landscape, which is what we want. We got Sunset Image, which is what we want. And that looks good. All right. So we're going to keep a little bit more organized that way. So Tear 2. Might put that down a bit. Um, what I'm going to do for this one is... Let's see. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll get rid of the center first. <clears throat> All right, so what I want to do is select my second tear, use the quick selection tool here over on the left, grab that center hole. And what I can do here is go to select, modify, and expand. Uh, I think 10 pixels is actually going to be good. And you'll see it just expanded that selection beyond the edges. And that's going to allow us to just get a clean mask, make sure it's, it's looking good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do controller command shift I to invert that selection. And I'm going to punch that out of the sunset image. There we go. So now we have a hole in the sunset image and we can bring in another background. One thing I want to do before I do that is just adjust this paper tear, um, another adjustment layer. So new adjustment layer, we go to layer, new adjustment layer. And hue and saturation, I think will be a good one for this. Going to right click that great clipping mask to clip it just to the tear so it's not affecting the rest of the image. And I'm just going to take that um, that saturation down so it matches the color a bit of the other tear, which I think is working. All right, yeah, so we're good. So the next thing I want to do is go into my asset folder here, select this galaxy image, controller command J to copy that. I just like to keep all my original assets just in case I need them in that folder. And I'm going to take this galaxy image. I'm going to bring it all the way down to the very bottom. So it's behind all these other layers. Now from here, uh, we could make this a smart object. If you're going to be resizing anything, it's always a good idea to convert to smart object, right click it for it to smart object. And we can scale it down and kind of select which part of the galaxy uh, looks cool. I think that looks pretty neat. It's got some cool colors and stars going on. 
So from here, um, I think it looks pretty good, but we, we are lacking some depth. I thought it might be cool to add some shadow behind the tears so it looks like these are almost like 2D layers or there's something going on there. So something fun might be to add some shadows onto the skies behind the tear. So I'm going to select our sunset, do controller command, shift in, hotkey for a new layer. You can also go up to here at the top, layer new. And I'm just going to call this, uh, I'll call it multiply. It's a shadow layer, uh, but I'm doing a multiply blending mode here. You can call it a shadow layer, or blend, blend layer, whatever's easier for you to remember. Um, you can use exposure layers for this and just mask it and crank down the exposure for shadow. I personally like multiply layers uh, just because I can select the tint that I want. So if I want it more blue, uh, more red, more saturated, I can do that. So I'm going to create, or I'm going to select like a desaturated purplish type of tone. Let's delete this and redo it. And with a soft round brush, again, probably want to lower the flow on that. Just kind of go around the edges slightly so it's almost like some sort of diorama effect. Like these are, these are layers overlapping each other. This is an optional effect, of course. I like the contrast it creates. Uh, we can also do that on the galaxy. Control a command shift in for a new layer. Call that multiply. Select the multiply blending mode. Do a quick little shadow for that. Again, make sure to create clipping mask so you're not painting over everything. But I like the additional depth this creates. I could even go a step further and on top of my tear layer, my second tear layer, do another one. Multiply. Control shift in, hotkey, clip that to the tear layer. Basically anything I need to add shadow on there. So it's like overlapping the tear too. So those are just some options. Um, let's see, where are we at? Yeah, okay. So I think we're doing pretty well. Now let's add in the alien. Got to make sure we have time for the alien. So what we want to do from here is go into the assets, select our alien. Control J, Control a Command J, and pop in this scary guy. So now there's a few ways you could modify this character. Um, let's make sure he's visible fully. Press Enter to confirm that. And uh, what we could do here, for example, is if you select the Quick Selection tool, I mean, you could use Lasso tool, Quick Selection tool, Pen tool, uh, but I always use Select Subject, very useful. If you click that at the top when you have the Quick Selection tool, um, It'll use Adobe's AI to try to grab this image based off what it thinks the edges are. Now, this is pretty good. Um, you can see there's some gaps in the fingers we would have to clean up. I'm going to do control or command, or sorry, control or command, yeah, D, um, just to deselect. We could also try the object selection tool over here. Sometimes in different circumstances, when the subject isn't as clear, but the object is, um, and like if there's multiple objects, I might use this. But this actually did a pretty nice job. You can see it did a better job on the hand. So I'm actually going to use this. If I need to clean it up, I could always press uh, like my quick selection tool, hold on shift um, to add to the selection, hold on alt to subtract from the selection. You see there's some gaps here. Um, I could use any any of my favorite selection tools to kind of clean that up. But I think this is good enough for our purposes right now. I could always go back and clean it up later. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click the little mask button at the bottom of the layers panel right here. And that will mask him out. And I think he's looking pretty good. So what I want to do is I think I want to make this a smart object, convert to smart object here. And actually, that way we can kind of play around with his sizing without losing. I'm thinking I want him pretty large, kind of like this foreground element. Let's see. Going off the page a little bit here towards us. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna press enter to confirm that. He's up to no good. Yeah, I mean, he looks a little sinister. And he's punched through, I think, two layers of reality at least. So I don't know. This guy's a little shady. Um. Oh, no. Did him... Is connection issues? I'm, I'm seeing some red. I'm so sorry about this, guys. I'm going to have to kind of see what's going on with my internet. Um, let me know if you guys can see me. 
Uh, I'm probably just going to keep going with it. Oh, are we having some tech issues? Oh, no. All right. Well, I will continue this. Oh, lost completely. Let's check YouTube here. Oh, it's back. All right, I'm still I'm getting some error on YouTube. Um, I'm so sorry about this, guys. You can see me. Okay, try refreshing. I'm just going to go along with it uh, to do what we can. So let's get back into it. Uh, so this is our alien. And from here, we've cut him out. But I want to match him with the rest of the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter neural filters. And um, we're gonna, gonna go ahead and try harmonization. So you can click this little switch on here for harmonization and we're gonna select the layer. So I should have named this, but layer six is my alien layer. Um, but we wanna select our reference image. So our grassy landscape is what we're gonna select. Since we have our alien selected when we did the effect and then we're gonna reference the image he's inside of, which is the grassy image. And you can see he turned really red there. Let me see if I can scroll him to the side so you guys can see this a bit better. Um, and from here, I can change different colorations. He looks a bit red to me, so I want to pump up the greens a bit because the environment's very green. That looks kind of good. Maybe the blue's a little bit due to the sky. Uh, we could even pop up the yellows a bit. I think he's looking a little bit better. I could even take the strength down to maybe 60. And I think that looks a bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Select OK. It's going to output it to a new layer here at the bottom. And then we have this new alien layer toggling that on and off so you can see uh, what's going on. And you can kind of see how those colors changed him. So from there, um, let's see what we want to do. We want to create a bit of a cast shadow. So I'm going to hide the first alien. This will be our alien. We'll name him that. Save that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to control or command J duplicate this. This is going to be kind of a quick and messy shadow. We'll call this shadow or maybe we'll call this cast shadow. And I'm just going to press. Um, I'm just going to select my move tool here with V. Drag this down by holding shift and dragging it down. Kind of creating this like shadow effect here. This doesn't need to be perfect. But what I could do from here is press, uh, usually you can use an adjustment layer for this. I'm just going to press Control or Command U. And I'm going to, whoops, saturation will leave one. I'll take it down to black. And I could actually fill this in with like more of a shadow color. I'm using the fill bucket just to fill that in with that same shadow color, that kind of mid purple that we did before. And um, I'm going to set that to a multiply layer. Now from here, I can um, erase a little bit. I'll select my eraser with a soft round brush. Just erase those parts coming off a bit. And uh, we can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm being very destructive with this layer because we're really just going to kind of play around with it as much as we need to. I'm doing about 40 pixels. I think that actually looks pretty good. From here, I can use that same color and I could paint in with it, with a soft round brush, if I want to make that a little softer edges. Um, if I want to erase any part, I can do that. But I think that's looking pretty good. That'll be a quick little shadow for us. Uh, we are running out of time here. Let's see if there's anything else I want to do. Uh, what I could do is create a little light on the top. He is heavily in shadow on the right side. I think in this environment, he wouldn't be so much. So I'm going to go on my alien layer, controller shift, Controller Command Shift N for that new layer. And we're going to create a color dodge layer 
which is one of my favorite ones for um, light. So I'm going to clip that color dodge layer. I'll call this CD for color dodge. Going to clip it to my alien. And we can paint in. Um, usually I use a dark color, very desaturated, and a warm color. Because we've got this warm lighting from the sky. I can just paint a bit on that on top. So it's kind of hitting a little bit more, just to even the lighting. The lighting's already pretty good and matching with this, which is really important for compositing, that the perspective and the lighting matches. I'd say those are like the two key things. Um, but we can do that a little bit there. Get a little bit of light on top of them. And I think that's all we have time for. The last thing I'd wanna do is mask out some bits of the alien. I'll do this real quick on the hands so it looks like grass is coming and overlapping him. Uh, you can use like a hard brush or if you have a, a textured brush that looks like grass, that would be a great time to use it. Just a little, little overlapping grass to mask. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Sorry about the tech issues. I'll get those worked out for tomorrow. Thanks so much for joining. Definitely check out the Discord and join us there. I'll be giving feedback and checking out all your designs. Thanks so much for coming, everyone. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.